Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. In today's video, we are going to discuss complementation test or complementation analysis. We will see what is this complementation test, why is it done, and in the end, we will take one sample example. Now, before I start with the complementation test, let's just understand this uh, one particular concept first. We know the uh, concept of complementation action of gene. That means, uh, okay, we know that for any phenotype to be expressed, we should have gene for that, okay, and that gene would express the phenotype. In some cases, what happens, there are more than one genes required for a particular phenotype. Say for example, any pigment of a flower is produced by action of two genes, okay, gene A and gene B. If there is a mutation in either of this gene, all right, uh, and when we say mutation, we are talking about homozygous recessive condition. All right, for this phenotype to be expressed, this pigment of a flower to be expressed, there should be at least one functional copy, one wild type copy of this, both the genes should be present. Then only this pigment comes, then only this phenotype can be seen. All right. So that means these two genes complement each other to give you a phenotype. It can be either, you know, this way or this way. Minimum one copy of each gene, one wild copy of each gene should be present. If there is a homozygous recessive mutation in either of the gene, you will not observe the phenotype. So what complementation test does is, when you have a mutant, where you have absence of a phenotype or any kind of mutation, it will help you to determine whether the mutation is in the same gene or the mutation is in two different genes. Now what does this mean? This becomes much more clear once I show you one example. In short, first, let's remember this. Com complementation test helps us to determine where this mutation is. Is it in the same gene or it is in different genes? All right, so let me just show you the example. All right, so first, let's take one type of example. Let's take one group of Drosophila. I have Drosophila, which are wingless. I have two mutant Drosophila, which are wingless. All right, and what I know is maybe there are two genes responsible for production of wing, for development of wing in Drosophila. But I don't know out of these two, you know, uh, in these two Drosophila, is there a mutation in the same gene? or there is a mutation in the different gene. Why there is no wing developed? Is it because they have mutation in the same gene or they have mutation in a different gene? So what I will need to do is, I will cross both of these mutants, all right? Now here, you know, you can see where the mutation is, but when you're dealing it with uh, this case in lab, you don't know where the mutation is. Let's assume for this case, for Drosophila number one, there is a mutation in gene A both the copies of gene A are mutated whereas in the second uh, drosophila the mutation lies in the gene B both the copies are mutated so what will happen when you cross both of these mutants of course you will get half of it in the progeny from both the parents so what we observed in the progeny it was normal it was wild type it developed wings how did that happen that means the mutation is of course in two different genes because both the parents contributed half of their functional copy of the gene, right? This shows that, okay, one parent had a mutation in one particular case, but it had other gene working and that was compensated by the other parent's chromosome or the parent's gene where the mutation was definitely on the different gene. So where you observe that the progeny shows the phenotype which was absent in both the parents. That means the mutation is present in the different gene. Then, all right, because see, you get one normal copy of each gene from each parents. This is what we say that complementation has occurred. All right, the genes that are uh, present, each normal copy from each parent, complements each other to give you a phenotype. All right, it compensates for the missing gene in each parent. So that's why you will say that in such cases, 
complementation has occurred all right so when you observe a phenotype in a progeny where both the parents are mutant that means definitely the mutation is in two different gene that means complementation has occurred all right and of course that shows that mutation is in different gene right mutation is in two different gene it is not in the same gene we and when you say now this is also one important point when you say that mutation is in different gene you would conclude that the genes belong to different complementation groups what does this mean so look at here we have gene a and gene b coming together and both are required for production of wing all right now hypothetically let's just assume hypothetically gene a is needed for a uh, wing protein production okay it codes for wing protein all right gene a and gene b is a uh, a gene that codes or that arranges this uh protein into a wing so for arrangement you need gene b all right so what will happen suppose if gene a is not present there is no protein produce even though gene b is working it cannot arrange it in the form of wing because there is no protein produce and if there is gene b which is uh, mutated even though the protein is produced it cannot get arranged and you will not have wing that means both gene a and gene b have different functions right they code for different thing and they have different functions that is why you will say that they belong to different complementation group since they are doing different functions since they are two different genes performing different function you are concluding based on your complementation test that these two genes belong to two different groups right so this was a case where we can see the mutation in different genes now let's take a case versus this where the mutation is in the same gene what will happen then so now let's take a second case where the mutation is present in the same gene of course remember when you're working in lab you don't know where the gene is i mean where the mutation is present all right so now i have two drosophila again mutant uh, it does not have wing all right and as you can see over here the mutation is in gene a for both the mutant but the location of the uh, uh mutation is a uh, different right in both the genes it is somewhere over here and in case of other mutant it is somewhere over here that means the gene is same but location is slightly different gene b for both the cases is normal so let's see when we cross both these mutants what happens so what we observed is the progeny also did not develop the wing the progeny also was mutant right so what could have happened look at here the uh, mutant one is contributing half of its uh, chromosome to the uh, pro progeny and that is having mutation in gene a and the other mutant also is contributing half of its chromosome that also has a mutation in the same gene that is why even though you have gene b intact it cannot produce wing on its own it needs both the gene at least one wild copy of each gene to produce the wing so when you observe that the progeny is also mutant does not show a phenotype that means the mutation is in the same gene here i have shown gene a it could have been gene b also right so this case the mutation is in the same gene that is what we are going to conclude and if you say the mutation is in the same gene that means complementation does not occur right because it does not have uh, two genes which can complement each other the mutation lies in the same gene it is not present to give you the desired phenotype so such cases where the uh, mutation is in the same genes you would say or you would conclude that complementation does not take place that means mutation is present in the same gene that can be in the different location in the same gene and so we can conclude that these genes belong to same complementation group there is nothing complementing each other whatever we are looking at the genes so the genes belong to same complementation group once again when i will just uh, show you one sample problem one sample example this is going to be very easy to understand but as of now this is what we are looking at the complementation test helps us to understand whether the mutation is in the same gene or in two different genes and uh, if you have mutation in different genes 
the mutant parent will give you a normal progeny where the phenotype is present that means there has been complementation complementation has occurred this proves that the mutation is in two different gene and, and thus you can say these genes belong to two different complementation group and if there is a case where you have two mutants giving you again the mutant progeny itself that shows there is no complementation taking place so of course the mutation is in the same gene it can be in different location in the same gene and we will conclude that they belong to the genes belong to same complementation group all right now let's take an example now look at this table here i have shown a cross between different mutants of rosophila a b c d e and f now we want to answer a couple of question based on this results base so what the first question asks is how many complementation groups are present determine from this particular table so now look at this uh, here where i have shown this red color star that means these are the mutants that are produced after crossing to mutants and wherever you see this green color uh, line that means they are the normal progeny so if you look at uh, this table look at wherever you have the mutant present because we just saw in the above example that if when you cross to mutants you have still a mutant produced that means there is mutation in the same gene and they belong in the same complementation group right so it will be easy for us to write down so let's look at this when you cross mutant a and mutant b you are getting again a mutant that means they belong to same complementation group just write it down group 1 contains a and b of course again if you see a when you cross with f you get mutant so that means a and f also belong to same complementation group that means a b and f belong to one single complementation group because even when you cross them you are getting the mutant that means the mutation is in the same gene for all these three all right uh let's write down the next group come to c and e here i can see one more mutant present that means c and e belong to one complementation group because even if you cross them you are getting a mutant progeny here also see c and e gives me one mutant all right so now what about this d we have classified a b and f as one group c and e belong to one group d is not producing mutant with any of these uh, other types of mutant that means d on its own belongs to a different complementation group altogether all right so we have classified them in three different complementation group based on what progenies they have produced and of course looking at this we can also say mutation is present in the same gene or not so look at the second question that's what it talks about for drosophila b and c drosophila b and c the mutation is in the same gene or in the different gene that's what it is asking for so let's look at this table for b and c when you cross b and c what do you get you get a normal phenotype a normal wild type fly and we just saw a ball where you have mutant parents and it gives you a normal progeny that means there is complementation which has occurred that concludes the mutation is in different genes so what can we conclude looking at this table there is normal progeny so for b and c mutation is in different gene it is not in the same gene see that's how complementation test is helpful okay this is the last question and it says that if a new mutant drosophila g is introduced that means in this particular study we have till f right one more new uh, mutant g is introduced and it is crossed with a and f all right and the resultant uh, progeny is a mutant phenotype so what does it say about this g mutant where does uh, this g mutant comes in what particular complementation group so what it says is we are introducing g and crossing it with a and f so let's first write it down we are crossing this new mutant with a and with f okay and what we get is mutant if we are getting a mutant for a and f a and f first of all they belong to the same group and when you cross this with the uh, new mutant g we are getting a mutant again 
as per our theory that means they belong to same complementation group so where can i place this mutant g i can place in the same group as a and f so g belongs to this particular group so that's how complementation helps you to determine uh, where the mutation is present is it in the same gene or it's in the different gene i hope i was not confusing i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning